There are times in life when the pain of the moment is so overwhelming, it feels like it's going to consume you. It feels like it's more than you can handle. Like it's overwhelming your senses and clouding your thoughts to the point where you can't complete even the simplest task. Unfortunately, this pain is something that you're going to have to accept and appreciate because the reason you're feeling this pain is because there's something in it for you. And I don't know what it is. There's definitely something in it for you. It's been my experience that when that pain gets to a certain point, the more you resist it, the worse it gets. So the best thing you can do is just relax and allow. If you relax and allow and just breathe through it, you'll find that the pain doesn't get any worse. Like there's a limit to how bad the pain can get on its own. It's only when you throw your resistance into the pain that it actually gets worse. When you stop resisting it and you relax into it, and you just allow it to be, yeah, it starts to subside. What's funny is this works the same when you're lifting weights. Like if you're doing an isolation exercise, say like a leg extension or something like that, and uh, you're 15, 16 reps into this set, the burning on your muscles can be extraordinary. I mean, it can really, really, really make it difficult to complete the set. But if you relax, you find that the pain doesn't continue to get worse. Like it, it levels out. And your leg actually kind of gets a little numb after a while. And you can keep cranking out those reps long past the time that you actually thought you could. So relax into the pain. I know that sounds crazy, but it makes a big difference. It'll help you get through the most difficult times. So for me, the most difficult time was the first days after separation, maybe even the first couple of months. Separation is probably the weirdest, most, I don't know, disorienting time I can remember. And I thought about it last night. I was walking into the grocery store and for some reason, because I'd been reading a lot of comments, and uh, you know, some of the commenters are guys going through divorces right now and they're talking about you know, only being six weeks in or two months in. And I remember that time. And I think as I was walking into the grocery store last night, I had this moment of flashback to that moment. The first thing you need to decide is about the wedding ring, taking that off. And although it's such a simple act and it seems so, I don't know, so in, insignificant, if you've been wearing that ring for 20 plus years and you take it off your hand, it's a very strange experience. It feels like you think everyone in the world is now looking at that pale band around your finger, marking the tan line where the ring had been. It's the weirdest thing. You feel like everybody knows, like everybody's watching you. And the truth of the matter is nobody knows. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. You know, it's just this very strange feeling of being in a different world because now you've suddenly taken that ring off and all that it symbolizes is gone. And just from a psychological standpoint, it's like, wow, what am I now? I mean, I'm not married, but I'm not single. What am I? Yeah, it's a very weird experience. And then deciding what to wear when you go out. I never thought about that, never. But suddenly, as a newly single guy, 
I'm thinking, well, what if I meet someone attractive? And, and I don't know why I'm thinking that, you know, a, a week into my separation or two weeks into my separation. But I remember having those thoughts, thinking, well, I might meet a nice girl. I might meet my, some of my exes out, you know, and now suddenly the dynamic has changed. Now I could do something about it. Yeah, right. I'm going to meet some ex-girlfriend at the grocery store and we're going to have a magical romance a month after my wife left. Yeah, like that's really going to work out. You become delusional. I guess that's my point. You definitely become a little delusional. The next weird event is going to places that you used to go with your ex. Now you're alone. Suddenly, her absence becomes so much more clear. So I would avoid that for a long time if you can. Because in those first few weeks after, you know, the separation, it's definitely a little weird. It's like, it's like you're missing a limb. It's like suddenly your, your left arm is not there anymore. And you're not really sure what to do. And again, there's a part of you that thinks everyone knows that you've recently been dumped and even though rationally you know they couldn't possibly but there's this i don't know this feeling of like uh i don't know like you've been the victim of a crime or something you know there's a little bit of trauma that you're carrying around and you think that other people can see it and they can't at least i don't think they can I thought that sleeping in the bed alone would be a problem or be, feel a little weird. But quite honestly, the dogs filled in pretty nicely. They were quite happy she was gone. <laughs> it opened up a really good spot on the bed. I got a big king size bed. And with her gone, all three dogs fit perfectly over on that side of the bed. So they were quite happy. It's kind of weird if I have a girlfriend or someone come over because we're sleeping with the damn dogs. <laughs> It definitely makes uh, intimacy a little more of a spectator sport, I guess. <laughs> Nothing like having a dog watching you. Anyway, I'm not going to go down that path. I'm going to get banned by YouTube. But, uh, yeah, so the, but the, the, the missing person is just kind of always there. That's the weirdest thing. It's like there's a like a ghost of a person that's following you around. And she's right there all the time. And you want to just block her out. You want to just get, get her the heck out of your head so you don't have to think about her anymore. But you got to kind of go through this process. Like the only way you build strong muscles is by lifting heavy weights. And unfortunately, this, this process is some heavy lifting. And so you just have to go through it. You just got to push. You got to keep on pushing because every day it gets a little bit easier. The weight feels lighter and lighter and lighter until it's not even a challenge at all. And you just lift it with no problem. So for you guys that are going through it and you're in those first few weeks, man, I feel you. It, it sucks. It just sucks. But you can't fast forward through it. You can't think, well, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. I'm just going to do this and get out of it. No. Now you can't do that because you're not really getting out of it. It's still there. Just because you're ignoring it doesn't mean it's not happening. Doesn't mean it's not going to pop its rear, its ugly head at some point, you know. You're still going to have to deal with it. It's very important not to rush this process because the only thing worse than going through this once is going through it twice. It's been my experience that if you don't figure out what's in this for you now, chances are you get to do it again. It seems like life just keeps serving up the same lessons over and over and over again. And I don't know why that is, but it's a universal truth. You know, I think that, uh, I don't know. You know. I'd like to think that life is like a classroom and we're all here just to learn stuff. And that may be the case, but it may just be a lot of mystical bullshit. Who knows? But in any event, we're definitely all learning stuff as we go. 
And if you're going through the pain and trauma of a separation and the uh, disorientation of your life being completely untethered, then yeah, there's something in this for you, you know? And I can guarantee you it doesn't involve anger, it doesn't involve drugs or alcohol, it doesn't involve lashing out. You know, it's trying to find that peaceful place inside you, no matter what she's doing, no matter how evil she is. Like, it doesn't matter. You've got to take control of the situation inside your own head and still be the best man that you can be today. Because lashing out at her and calling her names and, you know, doing stupid stuff ain't going to make this any better. In fact, all it does is it risk it. That's an act of resisting the moment. If you resist the moment, it just magnifies the moment. It just makes it so much worse. So just relax into it. Let her be who she's going to be. Who she is has nothing to do with you. And who you are has nothing to do with her. It's just about you being the best person you can be for your own sake. And I think that sometimes as humans and definitely as men, we don't realize that when we take actions against another person that are cruel or mean or, I don't know, malicious in any way, we're just causing ourselves pain in the long run. I mean, we're the ones that suffer. Yeah, you may be causing short-term pain for that person, but unless you're a socio or psychopath, you're gonna, you're gonna feel that for a long time. That's not going away. So there's no point in lashing out. The quickest point, the quickest path between these two points is through the middle. And that means going through the most difficult part of it. Maybe that's the scenic route, I don't know. But you definitely need to get whatever is in this for you. Because if you don't, you get to do it again. Today's a really appropriate day to be talking about this because it's been raining all last night. We had thunderstorms and it's still pretty overcast and it's a very gray, kind of damp, cool day. It's still nice out. It's a weekend, so normally these trails would be covered with joggers. I can usually never get my video shot during on the weekends because of all the damn joggers, but the rain keeps them all inside. <laughs> We're not talking about a real resilient group here, you know? Um, so I got the trail back to myself. So in a way, the rain was perfect. It was exactly what I needed. And that is the perfect metaphor for dealing with crap like a separation. It's like a rainy day. And sometimes the rain is exactly what you need so that you can accomplish what you need to accomplish. It keeps other people out of your business and lets you get some things done. So use it, you know? You gotta take advantage of the opportunity when it comes. Use it. Don't let it hit you twice. Appreciation, you know, that's a big one. That's one of my favorites. And when you're at your lowest of lows, that's when you need to start looking for those things to appreciate. Because man, they become so much more valuable in those moments. Like walking through these woods, like when I was in my lowest of lows, did I appreciate these trees? Like you would not believe. I mean, I literally talked to them and said, you know, I am so glad you guys are here because I don't know what I'd do if you weren't, you know? And uh, this forest and just starting to understand it and just the whole process, you know? The appreciation is just through the roof. So you got to start by appreciating the people that you have left in, left in your life. And you know, you got to have somebody that you can talk to. Even if you're just uh, talking to your dog, you know, honest to God, even if you just get these thoughts into words and out of your body, it gives you some relief. Um, you don't need anyone to reply. You don't need anyone to give you answers. You don't need anyone to uh, guide you here. All you need to do is form your emotions into thoughts and form those thoughts into words and get them out of your head. Because once you do that, it's cathartic. It's like you have, 
I don't know, it's like part of a cleansing. It's like you're wiping that shit away. It's like when you get it out of your body, it's like it suddenly, it's, it's like you've made it real and then you've removed it. Very, very valuable. Appreciation for little things, you know, like my, my dogs. My, we have a house full of animals and, uh, you know, the woods definitely helped a lot. Um, I got a gym, you know, and having that gym was a, uh, you know, that was a um, saving grace for me because that's my place to go for solitude. That's my place to go for, uh, you know, really clear, clear my head. So, yeah, you know, find those opportunities and really focus on them and appreciate all the things that you have because it will fill the void that she left behind. And that's what you need to do. You've got to fill that void with all the other things that you have in your life because probably for a big part of your life, your ex has been a big part of your life. So she occupies all this space in your mind. And in order to get her out of it, I mean, she's not going to leave on her own. You've got to push her out, but you can't just decide not to think about her anymore. You've actually got to have to um, have something else to think about. You've got to have to find another, uh, another focal point, you know. The last thing is um, you need to begin to observe where you are attached psychologically in this situation. And just to give you an idea, when I say attachment, and we use this as an example, like uh, you put way too much value on something that you own, you know, and it gets lost and it just destroys your, your whole life, you know. The item itself really isn't that important, you know. It's the value you put on the item that made it important. And that value is something that you created in your head. And then you granted that value to this thing, whatever it was. It has no real value though. Sentimentality is a little bit like that. And you know, I know a lot of people love to be sentimental and I, I kind of like it too. I mean, you know, Apple sends me these little videos. Today's my birthday. So, so they said, you know, here's John through the years. It was terrible, it was terrible. <laughs> It was not a well done AI video at all. But um, yeah, don't put value on things that don't matter. Like, observe yourself. And it's not just things out in the world that you can have value, you add value to, or you give value to. It's your thoughts, it's your beliefs, it's your concepts, it's what you think is real. Question it all, because none of it's real. I mean, it's all bullshit. I mean, your opinions, yeah. Don't have, don't give that value. It doesn't matter. When people give me crap in the comments about, you know, they disagree with me or whatever, I don't take that personally because I don't give value to my opinion. I mean, it's from my own experience and it has as much value as your opinion does. I don't think my opinion has more value than yours just because I can hold a camera and talk into it. I think that if you've got an opinion and you express it from a, you know, an authentic place, you know, I think that that has all the value in the world. I'm not gonna try to delete your comment or any of that stuff. I wanna hear it. I may not agree with you, and I'll tell you I don't agree with you, but that's much better than being an asshole. You know what I mean? So when you resist what is, especially if you have an attachment to something and that um, thing that you have the attachment to is being threatened in some way, shape, or form, and then you react in a manner that is I don't know, less than ideal, you just create pain for yourself. So how does this impact right now? So your ex is going to attack those things that you give value to. She knows you better than anyone. She knows how to push your buttons. Those buttons are access to your attachments. Realize that understand it. And when she starts pushing your buttons, whatever they may be, just realize these are the attachments that I'm talking about. Only you can give these things value. They have no value aside from that. So if you remove the value you've given them, then they can't harm you any longer. The attachment is what causes the pain. It's not the item itself or the, the concept or the idea or the belief. It's the, um, the value that you've given it and you can remove the value at will you do not need to continue to value that thing so remember going through the separation phase 
is a critical, critical part of your recovery from this experience. Don't rush it. Don't push it. Don't push it away. Just let it. Just allow it. Just, you know, roll with it. I think about standing in the ocean and the waves start beating on you, like right at the breakers. And you can stand there and let the waves beat the snot out of you and drag you under and turn you into a, you know, a, um, scraped up and all that stuff. Or you can either um, ride the wave in or you can go out a few more yards and just ride the swells, you know? Standing in the breakers is for idiots. Don't do it. So don't put yourself in that position. Just allow yourself to float easily over the waves and um, don't resist them. Don't push back. Ride them in or roll over them, but don't push into them because they will always knock you flat on your ass. All right, that's all I got for you today. I hope this video is helpful. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Oh, remember, stay healthy and if you can, stay single.